Good afternoon, gardeners. It's Sunday, March 7th, and it's a gorgeous day here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. And today I want to tackle a subject that many of you have asked over the past couple of weeks, and that is root pruning fruit trees in containers. And right here I have a fig tree that has been in this container for a year, and it has since outgrown the container, and it needs a root pruning. While I will be using a fig tree for this tutorial, this holds true for not only fruit trees, but also any tree in general that you are growing in containers. Now root pruning, in my opinion, is something that you must do when growing any tree in a container, and you must do this for three different reasons. Health, vigor, and production. Root pruning is not only mandatory for the overall vigor and production of a fruit tree, but it is mandatory for the health of the tree itself. There's an old adage in business that goes, if you're not growing, you're dying. This is not only true for companies, but it's true for trees as well. Trees naturally growing in the ground use the entire earth as a container. A tree can never outgrow the earth. So for all intents and purposes, trees in ground have an infinite amount of root space to form a root ball. Roots are the limiting factor for any tree, and a tree's ability to support its own trunk branches, leaves, and fruits are limited to the amount of nutrition its root mass can pull from the earth. When you grow a tree in a container, the container limits the root mass, and eventually the tree won't be able to grow additional roots. We call that being root-bound. Once the tree is root-bound, the tree is effectively limited in size. The tree then faces a hard limit on how many branches and fruits the root ball can support. So after a certain point, the tree itself will not be able to grow any further. As we already discussed, living creatures cannot exist in stasis. They have to keep growing or they will begin to decline. A root-bound tree will fail to grow additional branches, the vigor of the tree will fade, and eventually the tree itself will die. In order to prevent this decline, we have to keep the root system and the tree itself constantly growing. And the way we do that is by periodically removing the tree from its container, removing a portion of the root ball, and repotting it with fresh potting mix. That will give the tree new room to grow new roots and will keep itself in a state of youth and vigor. However, when we do this, we must also remove a significant portion of the tree's wood. We can't expect to cut off a big chunk of the roots and still have the tree maintain the same amount of trunk and branches. So a significant pruning must be performed as well. So the reduction of roots is complemented by a reduction of the tree's overall wood mass. Now let's talk about how often we need to do this. Unfortunately, this is mostly trial and error and will vary based on the size of the container and the type of tree that you're growing. Something incredibly vigorous, like a fig tree right here, may need to be pruned every one to two years depending on your container size, where a little five gallon container may require annual pruning, whereas a larger 10 or 15 gallon container like this may require pruning every other year. If you have your tree in something large, like a half whiskey barrel, you may be able to go three, four, or five years without pruning, but it's going to be very large and heavy to do so, so keep container size in mind. Something less vigorous, like citrus trees, may be able to go multiple seasons in between prunings in smaller 10-gallon containers. The real answer is, you'll have to monitor the health of your trees. If it's been a few years since you've root pruned and the trees are lacking vigor, they probably need root pruning, removal of some branches, and fresh potting mix. Keep in mind that the potting mix itself will also break down and get sludgy over time and needs to be refreshed every couple seasons anyway. And if you use soluble fertilizers to fertilize your trees, the salts can accumulate over time in the pots, requiring fresh potting mix. Now that I've shared with you the science behind root pruning, I want to show you how to perform this procedure. Now before we begin this procedure, you're going to need a few things. You're going to want a wide open area and a place that you don't mind that gets pretty dirty or some type of tarp to do this on because you're going to get soil everywhere. The second thing you're going to need is the tree that you're going to root prune. The third thing, and this is optional, is a larger container if you're going to up pot your tree. Uh, this tree is in a five gallon bucket. This is a number 15 container, so it's significantly larger, and it's going to be the final resting home of this tree unless I decide to plant it in the ground later. The next thing you're going to need are cutting tools. Uh, I recommend a Japanese saw for pruning any branches larger than half an inch in diameter. 
For smaller ones, you can use some hand pruners. I'm going to not use these at all because this tree, everything is pretty advanced on it. So I'm going to use the saw because it's a fine saw and the pruners are going to crush the larger branches. You are also going to want a utility knife to score and cut the roots, uh, something sharp with a new blade. Then you're going to need some fresh mix, and this is just Walmart Extra, uh, Walmart Expert Gardener Potting Mix, which is very high quality, that I added an organic all-purpose 555 fertilizer to, and some bone meal. And I've showed you how to make this mix before, and I'll link to it above, just in case you want to refresh your memory with that video. And finally, some cow manure compost that I'm going to use to top dress the final few inches of soil and give some slow release, good quality nutrients uh, while the tree recovers. One other thing you may want is mulch for the top of the container. I don't mulch my trees this early in the season because mulch is, uh, it cools the roots and it prevents evaporation of the water when you water your trees. Evaporation is very low since it's still pretty chilly out right now. And I actually want the black soil to be exposed to the sun and heat up faster. So I'm not going to mulch my trees until later in the spring when it gets hot. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my new container and I'm going to fill it with a few inches of my soil mix, which is the Expert Gardener potting soil with the added fertilizers. And that's going to make a nice, soft, supple base for my trees to root in. Now I'm going to extract the tree from the bucket and I'm going to give it just a few kicks to loosen it and then that's going to pull right out and then I'm going to set the root mass down and here you can see what the root mass looks like the darker orange brownish roots are the older roots from last year and these whiter roots are the newer roots the new vigor the new growth uh, that's trying to uh, expand out for the new season and obviously it can't expand much because it was confined to that little five gallon pot so these roots don't have too much uh, of a place to go so that container was starting to really limit the vigor of the tree now i want to determine how much root mass i need to remove from this tree and to do that i'm just going to set it on top of the several inches of soil that i just put in and now this root mass is above the lip of this container i want it to sit below the lip of the container so it gives me a nice watering ring and an area to keep my mulch in during the summer when things get hot. So I clearly need to remove somewhere around like four to six inches of roots. And this fig tree right here is a very early fig called Pastillier and uh, I let it leaf out which was a bit of a mistake. You should do this when it's still dormant, but this is an early fig and it's one of the first to begin budding. So that's why I'm doing this up potting first. Ideally, you wanna do this during dormancy. Uh, I missed the boat on that, but it's still early in March and it hasn't woken up fully yet, so it'll be okay. Just I probably should have done this about two to three weeks earlier, just as a point of reference. Now we are going to perform the actual root pruning itself. So what I'm going to start to do is I'm going to fluff up the roots on the bottom with my hand. I may not even need my utility knife because this is still a pretty young tree. It's only about one year old. Uh, so I'm going to remove some of the soil, rotate it around. I am going to have to cut off some of the side roots because it's just too much growth. So I'm going to very lightly cut at them just to free them up. And what we're trying to accomplish here is we're trying to get rid of some of these old darkened roots to let some of the new white roots grow because that is going to be the bulk of the vigor. You want that new growth. And the key here is to not be too overzealous with your root pruning. You don't want to do something crazy like remove half the roots. It's too much for the tree to recover from. So what you're trying to do is you're, you're trying to remove something like maybe a quarter of the root ball, maybe even a little bit less. The less you can remove, the better. You're just trying to remove some of this old growth to convince the tree to grow new root mass. And all of this old root mass that I'm removing is actually really great stuff to compost. There's a lot of nutrients stored up in that old root mass. 
so do not throw it out. And now that I've removed quite a bit of the soil, I have all of these spaghetti-like roots hanging down everywhere. I'm going to cut some of them off just to shorten them a little bit. Just a few inches here and there. We're not going to make big cuts. And I'm not going to make any big cuts to these really large roots. I'm just going to take out the hairline roots. And that has significantly shrank our root ball. So now we're going to place the root ball, the trimmed root ball, into the pot. And now the top of the root ball is several inches below the, uh, the ring, uh, the top of the container. So that will allow for a little mulch layer and a little bit of a lip for us to water. And I'm going to just twist it a little bit into the bottom of the soil. And overall, I'm happy with the way things look. It's centered well. And now I'm going to backfill it with the remainder of the fertilizer fortified mix. So now we have all of the new potting mix uh, holding the tree into position. And I left it several inches low because I'm going to fortify these last three inches or so with our cow manure compost. And we're going to put several scoops of this beautiful black gold into our containers. And then we're going to smooth this out. And then we're going to tap the container down to help compact it. And that just had the potting mix settle several inches. So we'll add a little bit more compost. And now the last thing that we're going to do is we are going to water this container in because uh, watering it is going to help with the soil compaction and remove any of the last air pockets that we couldn't get out by tapping the container down. And in order to water in the fig tree, I have a one and a half gallon green watering can that's over to the left. And in it, I put in my secret weapon for uh, all types of transplanting and up potting, Alaska fish fertilizer. This stuff is magical and I believe it is incredible at helping plants avoid transplant shock. And inside that watering can, I put in something like a two to three second pour, which probably equates to about a quarter cup or so of fish emulsion. And I'm simply going to water the tree in using that mix. And while that settles down, I'm going to prune my tree. So now it's time to prune back the fig tree. Because our root ball is significantly smaller, we need to take some wood off of this tree. This is especially important for fruit trees like figs because they bear their main crop on new season's wood. So every year you have to cut them back anyway uh, because the root ball on this little container can only support so much growth anyway. So what I'm going to have to remove a significant portion of wood from this tree in order to get it right. And the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to take off this main central trunk because it is just too tall and this fig tree can't, or this little root ball can't support so much vertical growth. It's just too much. So I made sure to make my pruning cut on an angle so any water that drips on it will drip off. I also want to make sure that all of my branches here are about the same height because trees grow through a principle called apical dominance where all of the growth hormones go to the highest points of the trees. So if I have one branch that ends way down here and one branch that ends way up here, the branch way down here won't receive any growth hormone and it will stay small. So this branch right here is my lowest branch. So I'm going to take this and cut this branch back to be about the same height. I'm going to cut this branch back to be about the same height. And I'm going to I'm going to cut this branch back to be about the same height. And now I have a nice, well-rounded fig tree where all of the branches are about the same length and roughly the same height. This one's a little bit lower, but it's about as close as I could get it to. 
And here you can see what the fig tree looks like in its final form. All of the tree branches are significantly smaller. The tree is significantly lower. It has very low branching. So because it's so low to the ground, all of these new buds that you see, these new buds are going to become the new apical buds and they are going to send all new branches up that are going to grow up towards the sky. And those uh, branches are going to uh, be my fruiting branches for the new season. And because I cut the tree back so far and this pot is so much larger, my tree is going to have plenty of room to grow and it's going to have lots of vigor this season as long as I give it enough fertilizer. And of course, if you so choose, you could take all of the wood that I pruned off of this tree and then you could cut them into cuttings that are 6 to 10 inches long and you can root those cuttings and make exact clones of your fig tree. And that right there is how you root prune and repot a tree that's growing in containers. Now I know in this video right here, I also up potted it into a larger container size, but now moving forward, if I decide to keep this tree in containers every other year, I will simply pull the root ball out of this container, remove something like 15 to 25% of the root ball, uh, given whatever my judgment on the situation is, cut it back down to roughly about what you see right here, and then pot it back up again in the same container with fresh mix. So your first foray into root pruning is probably going to also include up potting, but after that, you will simply maintain the same container. And you probably don't wanna to go too much larger than this in most cases because it starts getting really heavy. And if it's too heavy for you to lift the tree out of, then you're not really gonna be able to root prune the tree. So make sure that you keep container size in mind and how strong you are and your ability to lift it out of the container when you settle on your final container size. So everyone, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I used in this video or any of the products that I use in my garden in general, everything that I use is linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description. Thank you all again so much for watching and I hope to see each and every single one of you again on the next video. Hey Dale, are you enjoying this beautiful day? Boy, is it nice out. 72 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. Are you sun puddling? Are you sun puddling? Somebody's smiling. Look at that smile. Okay, we'll give you your paw rubs.